much to learn, so come on, let's go. This is so good. Oh, thank you, Lord. That is awesome. Oh, hey, Counselor Jeffrey. Counselor Hannah. Oh, good, good morning. morning. What a good day. Oh, man, it is a beautiful morning. Yeah. You hear those birds out there? <laughs> They are beautiful. I just so enjoy the mornings. Oh, I'm just so excited about our day. Yeah. You know why? Uh, I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Well, we're gonna go over our first key to developing our spirit. Uh huh. Feeding and meditating on the Word of God. I'm so excited to teach the campers about that today. I am too. You know, and it's actually really cool because that's exactly what I was just doing. I look like it. <laughs> yeah, spending some time with the Lord in the Word of God. It makes all the difference. It sure does. You want to hear the scripture yeah. I was reading? Okay, so this one is Psalms 1, 2, and 3. Okay. You probably know it, right? Yes. Yes. One of my favorites. Okay, so let's hear it. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, uh -huh. and his law he meditates day and night. He's thinking about it. Uh-huh. He's, He's thinking about, about it. You <laughs> shall be long. like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever he does shall prosper. That's a good thing. It sure is. You know, we're getting our roots deep into the word of God. Just like that trees uh -huh. in the river, uh -huh. you know, we're sucking up that word of God, we're meditating on yep. it, it makes us stronger. It does, and those leaves, they just never wither mm -mm. because we're planted by the river. Exactly, and when we meditate, it makes it so much easier to get rid of those thoughts from the flesh. Oh man, so much oh. easier. Those campers are gonna love knowing about this. It makes us strong, you it know? Does. Strong inside, strong. in our spirit. Oh. I like having a strong spirit. I do too. It is so good. <laughs> yes. You know, I was just thinking, that part where it says meditate day and night, mm -hmm. you know, some campers, I'm excited to teach them that it really doesn't mean every hour of the day yeah. or every second of the day. You know, because that's, <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, you can't get anything else done. You can't. God has things for us to do. I think that's yes. why it said he'll prosper us in everything that we do. Exactly. He doesn't expect you just to sit in your bunk all day long no. and read your Bible. No. He wants you to get out there and be a blessing to yeah. somebody. We got activities to do. We got activities. We got chapel to learn from. Yeah. I mean, there's things to do. Absolutely. And, and us as counselors, we got to watch over these campers. You know. You know. We have a job to do. Yeah, but it's cool. So cool that these campers are learning that as they spend time with God yeah. throughout the day, he'll show them his word and how it applies to their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, they can just be walking in the forest and then they can see something and be like, huh, that reminds me of the word of God. Yeah. Or they could be walking over here at an activity and going over there and then they look down and they're like, well, that reminds me of the word of God. Uh -huh. And God can just be like, this is it. That's that. Here's some more stuff. I love you. You know, telling them good things all day. Looking at the birds. You can just see all the things about God. He loves you. <laughs> Which is my favorite thing. Birds, you are a yes. bird specialist. Oh, I am a bird specialist. So, <laughs> it's so exciting that as I teach these kids about birds too, uh -huh. I can show them how good God is. Yeah. That he created them exactly how they are, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Those birds with all their colors, like this one bird I've been looking for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm excited about that. Oh, that's the chapel bell. Well, I gotta tell you this real quick before we head off there. Okay, so <laughs> another perk of spending time with God okay. is when he shows you things that you've been looking for. Oh. Like even the little yeah. things, like yeah. with me <laughs> and my birds. Yes. I've been looking for a painted bunting. What's that? <laughs> It's a bird. <laughs> what kind of bird? Well, he's blue. Uh huh. He's red. Uh huh. And he's yellow. Colorful. <gasps> so colorful. So beautiful. And the Lord showed me where I should go to find this bird. That's exciting. So, uh, I know what I'm doing this afternoon in my free time. Uh huh. I'm going to look for that bird. Of course. <laughs> Well, that's Toby. Wow. Hey, Toby, slow down, man. Oh, man. Wow. 
Ooh. He's in a hurry. Yeah, he sure is. Oh, hey campers, looks like we better head off to chapel. Yeah, let's go. All right. Where should I sit? I think I'm gonna sit in the back so the counselor won't see me. Ah, but I kind of lost in the cabin with Billy yesterday. I almost clobbered him. I should probably sit in the front so I can listen and learn how to overcome my flesh. Good morning, campers. Welcome back to Camp Spirit Man Boot Camp Chapel. Are you guys ready for praise and worship? Are you guys excited? Yeah! All right, can I have the same helpers, like the players and singers that I had last time? Come on up. All right, thank you guys for helping. It's gonna be so fun. And I heard that there's a drummer here today. Is that right? Why don't you come on up and help us? I even brought my drum. That's Yay. awesome. All right, before we get started, we're gonna do a little warm up. So we're just gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle our arms, wiggle our legs. Now we stop. All right, and then we're gonna start with Father Abraham. You guys all know that? Yeah. All right, let's go.
guys. All right, and then we're gonna do something on the inside.
the Lord. by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, as we begin to understand the difference between our flesh and our spirit, we can make changes to focus on feeding our spirit and putting our flesh under. Meditating on God's word helps us build our spirits so we can overcome the flesh. Pretty exciting, huh? It sure is. All right, campers, let's see what's next. Okay, campers, kids, all you guys, it's offering time. All right, so I have a question for you. Has God ever sown seed? Yeah, you're right. I have another question. What is the greatest seed that God's ever sown? Uh, let's go to the Bible to see what it has to say about that, all right? So turn with me to John 3, 16. But I think I'm going to have a volunteer come up. Oh, I will. Come on up, Joey. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal everlasting life. For God did not send his Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank you. All right, boys and girls. So God sent Jesus, which he went willingly, to die on the cross and raise again from the dead to produce a harvest. What's God's harvest? Well, it's me and you. It's all of us. Everyone who has and whoever will come to believe on Jesus and receive eternal life. So if you guys just made your Jesus Lord and Savior in the altar call just a minute ago, praise God, you are his harvest. All right, so I have a little demonstration. So I have a lemon. I cut it in half so you kind of kind of get an idea here. Inside this lemon, there's this tiny seed. Ooh, he's slippery. Yeah, so if I plant or sow that lemon seed, I'll produce a harvest of a giant lemon tree with lots of lemons. Many lemons is the harvest of this one seed. So like the seed has everything it needs inside of it to uh, produce a plant, God sent Jesus and he is everything that we need. So it's a complete salvation package. We've got healing, we have forgiveness of sins, we have strength, we have protection, we have provision. So how do we reap a harvest? Well, we've been talking a lot about um, knowing the difference between our spirit man and our flesh in camp, spirit man boot camp, right? So what happens is if we are training ourselves to hear with our, with our spirit, God speaking to us, he will lead us in the right place at the right time where to sow. So when we give, we will sow the right way every time and we will reap a harvest. But we gotta train ourselves, that's part of what we've been learning about, training ourselves to hear and obey. And when we follow his example, we learn more about what God thinks about giving and we can become better givers. Who wants to be a better giver? Me, I do. All right, so I have a confession for you guys. So everybody say this after me, okay? Say, I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. Great job, guys. Don't forget that, okay? Because it's really important. Hey, campers! Well, I have something to show you today. Do you see my grow box? Well, remember last time we were together? I planted a seed a bean seed in a pot. Do you remember that? Yes. Well, I decided to plant some more in my grow box. Look how the roots have just grown so deep and strong. 
Isn't that amazing? Did you know that when we plant something, the roots always grow first before anything sprouts above the ground? So let's look at these. This, see how deep? The reason these got so deep and strong is because it used water and it used the soil and the light made it grow strong, right? And it nourished it. It nourished it and made, made it so beautiful under the ground. Yeah, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Well, did you know that seeds and roots are just like our spirit man? Our spirits are just like these roots. And just like these roots, our spirit, if we feed our spirit, if we go into prayer time with the Lord and we read God's word and we nourish our spirit man, then it will grow strong and it will, we will be rooted and grounded deep, deep, deep. Well, I have a scripture to read and it kind of talks about that. So let's go to our, our let's go get our Bibles and let's turn to Jeremiah 17, eight. Oh, my Bible was upside down. All right, let's look and see. Are you ready? Here we go. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Did you hear that in that scripture? It said, and will not fear when heat comes. So boys and girls, when we, when we have thoughts of maybe fear or thoughts of, oh, I, I don't think I can do this. We have a choice right then to make. We have a choice that it, we could yield to those thoughts or we can say, no, we can stop and we resist those thoughts. We, we say, no, we're not going to think on those thoughts because we will be rooted and grounded. If the more time we spend in the word and we know God's word and we spend time with God and we build a relationship with him, then the stronger and the deeper our spirit man roots will be, just like our plant roots. And we will be able to resist and stop those thoughts. And we will be able to yield to the spirit of God and to our spirit man and we will be able to make the right choices and get rid of those bad thoughts, right? Yeah, it's so easy to do if we are strong in the Lord and, and if we read and we pray and do exactly what the Word tells us to do. Just like these roots are so strong, our spirit man is strong. Okay, let's say a confession. Are you ready? We are some of the most Good. Spiritually aware and spirit led kids of our generation on the planet. Great job. Happy growing. Toby, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Looks like you're having a little spiritual snack, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, what happened this morning on your way to chapel? It looked like you were running a marathon. Oh, well, first of all, I had to dig through my bag to get a new shirt. Mm -hmm. And then I, I heard a whole bunch of like commotion outside and the guys are playing hacky sack. Sounds like camp. Yeah, so I was out there watching them for a little bit, or what I thought was a little bit. And then I heard the chapel bells go off. So I ran inside looking for my Bible and I had to look through a whole bunch of stuff for my Bible and I couldn't find it. And then that made me realize I heard like a thought in my head that told me to put my Bible on my table last night, but I just kind of ignored it. And then that's why I was late to chapel. Gotcha. Man, there's a lot of things going on at camp, huh? Yeah. Maybe a few things that got you a little distracted? Oh yeah. Gotcha. Things a little cluttered in your bunk room? Uh, yeah. A little messy? Yeah. Yeah, man, it'll make, it'll make things a little complicated, won't it? Uh-huh. You know, I, I think that that thought that you had to put your Bible on the table, I think that was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit? Absolutely. He'll tell you things that'll set you up for success. He'll say, do this, and then you'll find out, man, it really pays off in the long run. Oh, wow. So next time, when you hear that thought, when you have that thought, follow it. 
put it, that Bible on your on your uh, on your side table, and uh, you'll have it there for when you need to go to chapel. You won't be late. Okay, thanks. Awesome, man. Hey, it's all good. You don't worry about what happened today. Yeah. Next time, just listen to your spirit. Okay. All right, thanks. Oh, Chrissy, hey, <laughs> come over here. Hey, Counselor Hannah. Hey, I just wanted to encourage you and tell you, you've been doing such a good job with worship. Well, thank you, I, I've i been so nervous doing it. <laughs> you have? Well, how come? Well, I've never done it before and I didn't know if I'd be good enough, and I was really nervous if I were to forget what I was going to say on stage. Oh, okay. Well, where do you think that thought came from? I guess I'm not really sure. Okay, well, let's think about it. Um, thoughts from the Lord. Those are true and just and good, just like it says in Philippians 4, 8. Mm -hmm. And the thoughts from the enemy, or flesh thoughts that are influenced by the enemy, those are going to be the exact opposite. So they're not going to be good. They're going to be bad. They're going to be full of fear. And they're not going to be very encouraging. So now what do you think? Is it a flesh thought? Absolutely. That is flesh thought. You know, when we get those thoughts, mm -hmm. we have to stop and recognize where they came from. Mm -hmm. So when you get a thought like that, you can open up your Bible to Philippians 4.8 and see if it lines up with what it says in there. Is it true? Is it just? Is it right? Is it noble? And if it's not that, then you would resist it because that's a flesh thought mm -hmm. that comes from the enemy. We don't want any of those thoughts, right? No. Right, we want to get rid of them as soon as we can. So instead of thinking on that, once you resist it, you've got to have something to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we should meditate on the Word of God? Yeah. Yeah, so do you have any scriptures that you could stand on that would help combat those thoughts? I don't think I do at the moment. Well, I have a really good one that I'd like to share with you. It's Philippians 4.13, and it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say it with me? Yeah. Or do you want to say it after me? I can say that. Okay, cool. Say, so I can do all things. I can do all things. Through Christ. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. Yeah, and when we say those over ourselves, and we meditate on those words that come from the Word of God, mm -hmm. we start to know Him more. We start to recognize those thoughts sooner yeah. and get rid of them and then replace it with the thought from God. Mm-hmm. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, you said you were really nervous, but you went up and did worship anyway, right? Yeah, I did. Well, when I was called up to do worship, I just felt like it was the right thing to do. Mm, well, that thought, that's a prompting from the Holy Spirit. You know, when He gives us those promptings and we listen to them, then we're on the right track. So you're on the right track. And I would encourage you to write that verse down so then whenever a different thought that isn't that, that's not good, that's not true, that's not noble. Whenever that thought comes, you can read that verse that says, I can do all things yeah. to Christ who strengthens me. Thank you, Counselor Hannah. I Absolutely. think I'm going to go back to my cabin and write that in my journal. That is a fantastic idea. I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye, Counselor Hannah. See ya. Oh. All right, kids. Woo. All right. Circle around. Circle around. Circle around. Circle around. Speed. Sir, why are we having them circle around? I don't know. Sounds good to me! Right. Circle, circle around! around. Circle, circle around! around. Well, that's it right circle. there! Stop! Stop! Alright, that's good. Oh, find good. a seat. All find right. a seat. Cool. Awesome. Alright, right, stand up! Oh, yeah, stand up! Campers, yeah. welcome back! Welcome Camp Beer Man Boo Camp! Yeah! Camp Beer Man Boo Camp! Let's do this! We're here to work out. You got me there. And here, we teach people how to grow their spirits. Do it with me, muscle man. Overcome their flesh. Their flesh. Now it's time to whip that spirit into shape. All right, let's do this. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're ready, set. Catch Pyramid Bouquet. Oh, oh, they're ready. Oh, they're ready. Oh, they're ready, Speed. All right, everyone, okay. make sure you have room. Spread out. You don't want anybody bumping in your neighbors. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I got you there, buddy. You got me there. All, All right. right. We're about to do our cadence. Oh, boy. But while we're doing our cadence, we're going to do a workout. A workout? Muscle man, 
It has to be. What workout should we do while we're doing it? Oh, I would really like to do some jumping jacks. What's a jumping jack? Well, I'll tell you, Speed. It's where you go like this, and then you go back like this, and then you do it again and again and again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Right. Oh, well, don't do it too much. Oh. We still got the cadence to do. Oh, all right. But that's all what right. we're going to do. All yeah. right. If you're ready again, say, can you me go get Oh, they're ready. Are oh, they ready? They're ready. All right, repeat all right. after me. Huh. Huh. We know how to overcome. We know how to overcome. These keys make our spirit strong. These keys make our spirit strong. Feed and think upon the word. Feed and think upon the word. Not forgetting what we've heard. Not forgetting what we've heard. Grow in love and spiritual fruits. Grow in love and spiritual fruits. We'll overcome and make deep roots. We'll overcome and have deep roots. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying what we just said? You know, I wasn't, actually. To be honest with you. That's were you lot. listening? Did you hear what we just said? They were listening. But let's recap. Let's recap. We were talking about the four. Count. One, two, three, four. The four spirit keys to developing a stronger spirit. Okay, okay. Although doing jumping jacks, Want to strengthen our spirit. But doing the keys that we've talked about will. Just like our natural bodies, our spirit needs food and exercise too to grow. Really? We have to give our spirits food by feeding and meditating on the Word of God and exercise them by doing things like walking in love, even if we don't be like. Add that to the list. Stepping away from a situation and praying in the Holy Spirit instead of reacting the wrong way. Wow, really got to add that to my list. That's a good one. Also, turning on a worship song and praising the Lord. Really? You know, I really like music. I That's should, one of my favorites. I should incorporate that in my workouts. Yeah, there's so many things. There are so many things! Oh, so many things! So many things! It's very exciting! That we can do every day to help our spirits grow and develop! Yes! And we'll be talking more about those as camp goes on. Until next time, stay spirit fit, stay spirit smart. Attention! Eyes forward, shoulders back! All right, according to my schedule, I have some free time after lunch. Cabin number five, it's your rotation for lunch duty. That's my cabin, are you kidding me? I just wanna play Ninja Llamas. Maybe if I sneak out with cabin six, I won't have to do anything. They don't take lunch roll anyway. That wouldn't be right to make other people do my work. It won't take that long anyway. Hey campers, did you see what Toby did? He listened to his spirit. You know, his flesh wanted him to just walk out on lunch duty, just go play his video game, but he didn't. He listened to his spirit. You know, he thought, man, if I left, I'd be being selfish. That's his conscience. That is the voice of his spirit. And if we'll listen to that voice, we'll get it right every time. Hey Alex, how are you? Hey, I'm good. What brings you over here? Oh, I saw like the bow and arrow and it looked really cool, but I've never done it before, so I don't know what I'm doing. Where well, you think you want to learn how to do it? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, we can go over a few things real quick and get started. All right. All right. 
Well, since I have this in my hand, so I was pulling out of the target there when you walked in. Oh, I can see the hole. <laughs> <laughs> this this is an arrow. Okay. Okay. Oh, what are these little things? Well, that's the uh, that's the fletchings. That's what keeps the arrow straight in flight. <laughs> okay, that's a weird name, but all right. Yep. Um, then let me grab the bow here. Okay, this is this is your bow. This is. This one happens to be a long bow. A long bow. Uh huh. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of different ones. I won't go into all of it, but since this is the one we're shooting, there's a couple, couple of things with archery that's very important that you want to remember. Okay. Is number one is your is your stance. My stance. Okay. So typically you want to stand shoulder shoulder width apart. Okay. When shooting a bow, um, that way you have a a firm foundation. Firm a, foundation. That way you're not moving. You're not moved is easy to the left or to the right okay you know which like in life you know um being rooted and grounded and you know having a firm foundation you know and our faith mm -hmm. um is is very important you know when the enemy comes and he tries to get us to you know go left or or go right or tries to get us to do something that we know isn't right like with my friends like when they want to go do something bad yeah okay. yeah yeah and that's going back to your faith you know Checking, checking with this, you know, with the Holy Spirit. You know, listen to the Holy Spirit. What's He telling you? Um, you know, checking it with, uh, you know, with the Word of God. Oh, okay. um, that's that's very important. So that's where I go to whenever I question something. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And then the second thing is going to be your anchor point. Anchor point? What does that have to do with bow and arrow? <laughs> well, let me explain it. Anchor point is probably probably a little bit more important than your stance when it comes to shooting a bow. Really? Um, because anchor point is. Whenever you draw a bow back, okay. you want to come back to the exact same spot. Same spot. Every single time you shoot, you want to be at the same spot. Okay. And the reason that is, is because if you're not, you're not going to be accurate. Oh, okay. Yeah, your accuracy is going to be off. If you're not, if you're not at the exact same spot every single time, mm -hmm. it's going to change. So you bring it back. So you bring it back to the exact same spot All every right. single time. You know, which, you know, which in life is the same way we're having an anchor point, you know, being anchored in the Word of God, being rooted and grounded in that Word, um, you know, so, you know, no matter what happens to us in life, we always go back to the Word every single time, no matter what comes against us, no matter what the enemy says, no matter, you know, what he brings against us, every time we go back to the Word of God, so. every single time. Oh, okay. And it keeps us focused. It keeps us on the on the bullseye. On the keeps bullseye? us keeps it focused on the prize. Yes, I'll yeah. remember that since you compared it like that to the bow. That that'll be easier. Good. I hope I hope that helps. Yes, it will. So you want to try shooting it? Yes, definitely. All right, let's get started here. Let me okay. grab an arrow here. Okay. Okay. When you put the arrow on, you're just gonna hold it. You're gonna okay. slide it on your wrist. Put it on your string. Oh, it clips on. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna let you do that. Okay. So hold it like this. Yep. Okay. There you go. Okay, when you draw back, make sure you make sure. Remember we talked about the anchor being yep. anchored. Make sure you're anchored, and then slowly release. Muscle man, thanks for helping me get these kayaks out into the water. Although you didn't have to carry everything yourself. <laughs> Don't worry about it. They don't call me Muscle Man for nothing. <laughs> I guess that's true. Well, now that we've kind of pushed out here in the water, isn't this nice? This is one of my favorite places to go. It's so peaceful and quiet. Quiet? You think it's quiet? I mean, I don't think it's very quiet. Look, there, there's birds singing up in the trees. There's, wow, I think there's a mosquito flying around my ear or something. And then, look, there's... Is the wind rustling the leaves? Well, muscle, well, that's not very quiet to me! Muscle man, it's... We have to get quiet ourselves, too, in order to not be distracted. I come out here so I can pray and build up my spirit man so I can hear from God. That sounds good and all, you know, trying to hear from God, but why do you have to get quiet to hear from God? Well, it's important that we don't have any distractions so we can just focus on what he's saying to us. Just kind of like what Jesus did when he was tempted in the wilderness. Wait, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness? 
Yeah, that story in Matthew 4 says he went to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and he was tempted of the devil. First, the devil told him, well, if you're God, why don't you turn this rock into bread? And then he said, I'll give you everything in the whole world if you just worship me. But Jesus, since he had spent so much time with the Lord, building up his spirit man, he knew what the right answer was, and he was able to withstand that temptation. Wow, that sounds like a really big temptation to overcome. I mean, not turning a rock into bread after not eating for 40 days. That's quite a temptation. Exactly, and we have our own temptations. That's why I like to come out here whenever I can to get quiet and build up my spirit man and practice listening to God so I can withstand temptations that I have. Hmm, you know, I think I'm gonna try this getting quiet thing. Maybe I'll come out in the kayak a little bit more. This is the first time I've been in a kayak, actually. Yeah. With a friend? That's pretty nice stuff there. I like that. Well, I think for now we should probably get these kayaks back to the kids so they can try it out. Oh, for sure. I think everyone should try this. Hey, uh, what did you do with the paddles, Muscle Man? Paddles? Yeah. Is that how we're supposed to get back? Yes. Oh. Well, I didn't carry paddles. As we all know, I didn't win the arms division from carrying paddles all the time. Well, I guess we'll just float back to shore. Float, float, yeah, that's what we're doing. We'll hey, just float back to shore. This is a good opportunity for us to practice getting quiet. Yeah. Remember, we have to try hard and focus on the spirit and build our spirit man and not get distracted by anything. Okay. All right, I'll give it a try, this being quiet thing. I can do that. Oh yeah, getting quiet, that's what I'm good at. I'm doing that today to build my spirit, man. Getting quiet, yes. Here I am being quiet, floating down the river in a kayak. Muscle man, muscle man. Yeah! You have to, you have to try a little harder to be quiet and listen to the spirit and put your flesh down so your spirit man gets built up. So I should, I need to quiet myself, is what you're saying. Exactly. Your okay. Flesh and yourself wants to talk and look at things, but we have to focus on the Lord and what He has to say to us. All right, all right. You're right. I'll give it a try. I, I can do this. <clears throat> ah, I can get quiet. Quiet is what I am. I'm so quiet. Look at how quiet I am. We know how to overcome. These keys make our spirit strong. Quiet, I'm getting quiet. Yeah. Gotta get quiet. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Quiet. Quiet. Howdy campers. It's snack time. My favorite time, well, one of my favorite times. And we're going to uh, nourish our body because we've been learning about nourishing our spirit and sometimes when you need some quiet time with the Lord to nourish up that spirit you need to quiet down that hungry tummy and there's nothing better than a good healthy nutritional snack now this is one you're going to need your mom or your dad you're going to grab yourself an apple and mom or dad is going to slice this like so and when they get that slice it looks like a cookie but it's much much more nutritious than a cookie and then here's the part that you're going to do you're going to get you some peanut butter lots of good protein is in that peanut butter get the healthy kind with a little bit less sugar and you're gonna get to spread that on there. Mm, mm, mm. I really do like peanut butter. I think peanut butter is just good on just about, well, most things. And then you're gonna take yourself a banana. And again, your mama or your daddy can help you with this and cut you up some little slices like so. And if you want to, you could even slice a little bit more. Have your mom cut it however you like it. You want little pieces, you can do little pieces. And if you want the bigger round kind, you can do the bigger round kind. I'm just gonna do 
four little pieces right here. Now here's the part that's really fun and delicious. You're gonna get you some chocolate chips and you'll just sprinkle a little bit on there like so. Mmm, that's gonna be delicious. And here we've already got some going. And you can pick that up and eat that just like a cookie. And like I said, if you want the bigger pieces of banana, you can do the bigger pieces of banana. Alrighty, boys and girls, y'all come now and you get some of this delicious nutrition snack. Hey, howdy campers! Woo! This has been a great day at camp today. My camp activity today is making a bird feeder. We want to nourish the birds like we want to nourish ourselves. Now, hey, wait, campers, don't forget, we walk at camp. Yeah, walk. Walk to your next activity, please. Okay, oh, excuse me. All right, boys and girls, we are gonna make this camp feeder. So I want you to grab a pine cone. Look around you, do you see a pine cone? Okay, awesome, if you don't have a pine cone, grab a stick. That'll work too. We wanna feed these birds. Now, a pine cone is going to be our vessel. Hmm, a vessel for peanut butter. You should find some peanut butter around you. You're gonna take your peanut butter, put it on a plate. Yep, you got the plate? Okay, perfect. Okay, you're gonna take your pine cone. You are going to put this pine cone in the peanut butter. Do you think birds eat peanut butter? I think so. Here, let's put some peanut butter in here. But more importantly, this peanut butter is going to hold our bird seed, which we know for sure the birds eat bird seed. All right, I'm gonna scrape this all along my peanut butter. Uh-uh, no, we don't need the peanut butter. No, it's for the birds. All right, get it on your pine cone. Oh, campers. Here we go. Now, covered in peanut butter. Are you covered in peanut butter, your pine cone? Perfect. All right, now, next step, station number two, this plate of bird seed. I'm gonna roll it all on this plate of bird seed. And you will notice bird seed sticks to peanut butter. Ha ha. So probably birds do eat peanut butter because the seed is on the peanut butter. All right, there we go. What is gonna happen at camp with all these bird feeders hanging around? After you make your bird feeder today at camp, I want you to go find a tree. Get you a rope and a string or a string. Go hang that in a tree. Walk around, find the perfect spot. Then, when the next time you're walking around at camp, I want you to look up in that tree and see how much of that bird seed is gone. Or, you might even catch a bird eating it right then and there. Because you know what? We gotta eat, and the birds gotta eat. Look here. Whew. I gotta go find a tree to hang mine on. You guys, let's go find a tree. Let's go hang them up. All right. Hey campers, hasn't this been such an exciting day learning about feeding and meditating on the Word of God? Well, one more thing before we head off to bunks. If you fill your life with the Word of God, that's what you're gonna see in your life. So when those flesh thoughts come, cause they will come, I encourage you to get into the Word of God, find a scripture that helps you combat those flesh thoughts and overcome those thoughts and just see how your spirit will grow. Until next time.